Okay, another question that came in. It says, said, can you can you throw some light on using Ignition as an MQTT broker? And how can we configure topic in Ignition? So let's let's talk about that. So certainly you can use uh, Ignition as an MQTT server. So I'm gonna bring up my Ignition gateway here and go into the configuration section. Kind of anticipated some questions on MQTT today. So there are three modules that we provide for MQTT. Uh, there is an MQTT distributor module, and this is a an away, a standard 3.1.1 compliant MQTT server. So we happen to have a module for Ignition. So for the folks that don't have a third-party broker, they and they don't have anything else, they want to just have it all contained with Ignition managed there. It's it's perfect. It is a full fully compliant MQTT broker with access control lists and user management and uh, and all of that. So you can simply just install it just by installing it into Ignition, it is now, I now have an MQTT server that I can work with and uh, you can run it on this kind of the standard non-TLS and, and of course TLS ports. Uh, we, we encourage the TLS for having encryption there. But once you have that, I mean, it's as simple as if I go to MQTT FX here, this is just an MQTT client. So if I go into that, basically I can you know, let's create to my local host there. And yeah, I think that should all be good. So let's just do a connect. So now I'm connected to my local broker just like that. And I could publish and subscribe. Now in particular, there's a lot of questions. I'm gonna exit this here. A lot of questions around, you know, the data that's being published uh, in MQTT. So MQTT itself, you can publish any data on it, on any topic, uh, whatever you want. And so that is, it's good and bad, right? And it's it, it, what's, what's good is that the, the specification doesn't dictate how the data should be formatted. What's bad though is if I have lots of applications and devices, we need to have a known format of that data so that there's automatic discovery, there's interoperability, there's all of that. And that is why MQTT Sparkplug was created. So um, let's come down here. So Sparkplug, is a payload specification. It's an op open standard specification, and it's part of the Eclipse Foundation. And it defines an OT an OT centric topic namespace, and it defines the payload and the data models, uh, and and ha and how state management works, and of course the ability to publish you know metadata and actual UDTs or models along with that, and store and forward of data. So really, what we're getting here is kind of this single source of truth of data at the edge of the network that is completely contextual, contextualized in a format, in a standard format that can be consumed by any, you know, any system and have that understanding to, to know what that, what that data actually is. And so that's the format that we use in Ignition by default. So we have a module called our MQTT transmission module. And this module will be connected to that broker. So I've got connected and we basically point Ignition, point the transmitter to a set of tags and it will publish that data on that particular topic. So if I look here, I actually have some tags in here. I've got a PLC connection with a couple example tags. Uh, and if I go over to my engine, uh, that data was automatically discovered. So there's my group, my edge node, and there's that PLC. And there is uh, those two tags that are being published there. So we like to use Sparkplug as that topic namespace, uh, just because it's simple. But if you want to publish data on any on any topic, you certainly can from Ignition. If you also want to subscribe to a non-Sparkplug format, like a JSON format, you could do that as well uh, within MQTT Engine. So that's not a problem at all. Now, a follow-up question to that is around basically defining a really nice normalized unified namespace. And again, that's something that Sparkplug really helps out with. So let me kind of go down here to a to the topic namespace. Sparkplug basically forces this and you have three layers in the topic that you can leverage. And this is allow this allows for a scale scalable namespace that can re uniquely identifies all of the actual devices and edge nodes that we have out there. So first is our group ID, and the group ID is a logical grouping of all of the edge of network nodes. So possibly you do it by your company or maybe by a physical area, um, some, some grouping there, but that's your top level. And then you have the edge node ID. So this identifies you may ignition edge 
or maybe identifies the actual, you know, some other device, some other node that potentially behind it has one or more devices. And then from there you have devices, which identifies a physical, a physically uh, or, or logically a device that you have out there that's, uh, you know, that's connected to that particular node. So for example, with ignition edge, well, the group ID can be whatever we want, but then our edge node would be that ignition edge system. And then I can have 10 PLCs connected to it inside of that. And we'd have, you know, give each of those PLCs a different name. So within that though, outside this topic, you can have any tag structure you want below that. It's completely up to you. And if you want to do data modeling, UDTs, all of that, that's all good. But because we have, because top uh, Sparkplug defines this, it gives us a, a way to identify these assets properly with uh, all the health and diagnostic metrics that go along with that, along with, you know, uniquely identifying all of these. Um, and it allows us to, to scale that up to lots of devices that we want to have out there. So, so that, that's a, definitely a good question there.